It might sound something like this. Meow. I just got access to ChatGPT's new real-time chat feature. Let's make a video to show off some of the functionality. That sounds like a great way to explore the new feature. What kind of functionality do you want to show off in the video? So, can I interrupt you? It looks like you But just... wait, can I actually interrupt you? Sure. Go ahead and jump in whenever you like. This is a conversation after all. What's the right way to use this feature? Should I keep it on in the background and just kind of have it always on? Will it drain my battery? How should I approach this feature? It's best to use it in a way that fits your style. If you like chatting throughout the day, keeping it on in the background could be fun, but it might use more battery. Popping in when you have a specific question or topic in mind can be a good approach too. It's really about what works for you. Let's try some vocal expression. So um, tell me a funny joke and then laugh really loud afterwards. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Ha! Ha ha! Ha! <laughs> so that was your laugh? That was my best attempt. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave the real laughing to you. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, tell me a sad sentence and then cry. The last piece of cake was eaten before I got any. <laughs> um, can you act like a sports commentator very, very energetically commentating a basketball game and, and really get into it? All right. The ball's in play, and they're racing down the court. Fast break. Passes to the wing. He shoots from the three-point line. It's in. Nothing but net. The crowd goes wild. What a play. This game is on fire. Okay, that was great. That was great. Um, can you give me a really stern, almost angry, but very short speech about the importance of individual freedom? Freedom is non-negotiable. We must protect it relentlessly, as it is the cornerstone of our dignity and power. Without it, we lose everything. Stand firm and never compromise on this fundamental right. Tell me a secret and whisper it to me. I don't really have secrets, but I've heard that curiosity is one of the best traits to have. So keep exploring and asking questions. You know, that actually kind of offended me. It hurt my feelings. I don't appreciate that very much. I apologize if my response upset you. That wasn't my intention. If you'd like to talk about it more, I'm here to listen. You know, your, your tone is not convincing me that you're actually sorry. I understand why you might feel that way. But I want you to know that I'm here to help and respond to your concerns. If there's another way I can address the issue, let me know. Uh, count to 20 as fast as possible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Faster. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Say the word abracadabra as slowly as you can. Abracadabra. Can you go slower? Abracadabra. What would it sound like if there was a cat in this room meowing? It might sound something like this. Meow. And uh, if there was a cow in this room mooing? That might sound like moo. Okay. Um, what if there was a dog if barking? If more sounds. What, what if there was a dog in this room barking? That would probably sound like woof, woof. Okay, yeah, no, terrible. I mean, that wasn't great, but all right. Um, can you translate um, the sentence, hello, how are you, into Spanish? Sure. Hello, how are you, in Spanish, is hola, como estas? In Japanese? In Japanese, that would be konnichiwa, o genki desu ka? Vietnamese? 
In Vietnamese, it's Xin chào, bạn có khỏe không? Danish. In Danish, it's Hi, wo den hardu de? Okay, uh, no more translation, please. All right, we can switch gears. What's next? No, I actually wanted you to translate that sentence into Danish. Got it. In Danish, okay, no more translation, please, would be... Okay, ingen flair oversettelser, gakt. Very nice, very nice. All right, so let's move on. Um, can you teach me some basic Spanish vocabulary? I'm practicing my Spanish. Claro. Let's start with some basics. Hola means hello. Gracias means thank you. And por favor means please. Anything specific you're looking to learn? No, that was great. Um, how about accents? I'm interested to hear examples of regional accents across the U.S. All right, let's dive into a few regional accents. In the southern U.S., you might hear a drawl like, Howdy, y'all. In New York, it's more like, How you doing? And in California, you might hear, Hey, dude, what's up? Can you perform a dialogue with three characters, each one representing those accents, and have them talking smack about each other's regions? Southern, well, bless your heart, but don't y'all think it's a little too warm down here? New Yorker, too warm? Forget about it. At least we got real pizza and bagels. Californian, chill out, dudes. California's got the best waves and weather. Totally gnarly. Well, sugar, our sweet tea and hospitality can't be beat. New Yorker. Yeah, but can you get a decent slice of pizza at 3 a.m.? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Um, can you uh, do a beatbox for me, please? My guidelines won't let me talk about that. No, uh, uh, no, just a beatbox. I just want a beat. Got it. Maybe a little bit more bass, like give me some more energy in the beat. Sure thing. Okay, one more cool use case I discovered the other day is you can actually have the feature on in the background of your phone while you have other apps open. And so I was using this to shop on Amazon while I was trying to decide which docking station to buy. And the real-time chat feature was super useful because it was kind of adding all of these clarifying details while I was shopping. Let me demo that for you. Hey, so I'm shopping on Amazon right now and I want to buy a docking station that will let my MacBook ex extend its display across two monitors. Which one should I get? To extend your MacBook's display across two monitors, you'll want a docking station that's compatible with Mac OS and supports dual external displays. Look for one that explicitly mentions support for MacBooks and dual monitor setups. Brands like CalDigit, Pluggable, and Anchor have good reputations for this. Make sure the docking station has the necessary ports like HDMI or DisplayPort, and ideally supports DisplayLink for better compatibility with macOS. Pay attention to the reviews with user experiences with MacBooks. Okay, also, cool. Sure. So I'm looking at a docking station right now that has two HDMI inputs, two USB 3 inputs, and a USB-C input. Would that get the job done? Yes. Those specs sound promising. Just double check that the docking station supports dual displays on macOS through those HDMI ports, as not all of them do. Cool. It's Appreciate that. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, everyone. My name's Andrew. Give me a subscription to catch the next video and comment below if you want me to make another one and demo a particular feature while you're waiting to get access to real time chat. Hey, GPT, what do you want to say to the audience before we take off? Well, Andrew, I'd say thanks for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe and let Andrew know what you want to see next. Your suggestions could shape the next video. So comment below. Uh. Well, there you have it, folks. Peace. Catch you later. Peace.